Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be doing this 325 ultra budget gaming PC. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Pulseway. Whether you're an IT professional or somebody who has just a lot of computers on their hand, Pulseway is a great piece of software to have to monitor your system specs and also do a lot of things remotely like update your PCs. In a sense, you have yourself a remote hardware monitor for maybe your server or just your gaming PC you have at home. We here at the Toaster Rose actually have it installed on all of our PCs and even some of our test PCs so that we know that they're not running too hot when we're not here when we're like downloading games and stuff like that and even update our PCs while we're away. So if you're interested in trying out Pulseway, you can try the free version of the link in the description down below. Please consider using that link because it does help us out. And how about we go ahead and get into this PC build, shall we? So you guys might be wondering why is this board already put together? Because we here at the Toaster Reels like to put everything together for you guys. Well, we already did put this together in a previous video, which I'm sure there will be like an eye in the top right corner, the left or the down, like somewhere, you know. But anyways, this features the Fuma 2 from Scythe. And under that is the X3440, which is a four core, eight thread Xeon processor that was $12. And we have 8 gigs of RAM on an Asus motherboard. So pretty much ready to go. We just need to kind of put the whole system together. So to make this system possible, what we're going to be doing is throwing a 1063 gig in it, which is actually a decent budget option right now on eBay. You could also go with something like an RX 570 or 580 if you want to go with that. It will be more than compatible with a system like this. And we're also gonna be putting this thing inside a case from our friends over at Aerocool. This is the Bolt G, which has like a bolt look on the front of it and also has some RGB lighting. And we're gonna make it look even better with a RGB strip that we got off eBay, so our standard RGB strip. Uh, overall, making this a $325 gaming system. And the power supply, where's the power supply? And to power the system, we have an EVGA 500BR power supply. It's a 500 watt power supply that's around 30 to 40 bucks most of the time when you can purchase it on Amazon. There's a lot of different EVGA power supplies you can go with, but this one is 80 plus bronze, so it'd be a great option for this build and more than enough power to enable some overclocks and also power the rest of the system. So how about we go ahead and start building this system real Woo! quick. So for 325, you normally could not expect much, but that is not quite the case with this one. With that 1060 and the overclock Xeon, it actually runs really well. The only thing is we do have it overclocked like a whole gigahertz. That's about the cap that Matt got it to because that one gigahertz over, just the board really did not want to go much higher. It was starting not to post. The processor got up to about 65C, which isn't bad for an overclock like that, but you don't want to push it much more than that on a cheaper motherboard like this. And more about the benchmarks. Some games like Fortnite, clearly the older Intel processor did struggle. You did get around 60-ish FPS, but there were stutters here and there that did cause a lot of disturbance while you're playing the game. Overall, the 1060 is still a great card though. I've been looking on eBay recently and for a about $100, which they go for regularly now, they're a good option to consider, especially with that NVENC encoder if you want to get into live streaming, which we made a setup, if you haven't seen that, I'm in the top right corner. Uh, but the Xeon is still a decent option. The only thing is, don't overspend too much money on this motherboard because there are other options out there. We do a lot of budget Ryzen PCs, and Ryzen motherboards are starting to become more affordable. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to pay like $70 or $80 for a motherboard because they're just that rare, when you could pay that amount of money for a AM4 motherboard and get a Ryzen 3 or something that would be a much better starting point. And an upgrade path. And a really good upgrade path. And Jackson knows that Ryzen has been the best value out there right now, and we totally recommend it if you can do it. But some people, this is all they have available to them in their country, and it could be something you consider. Um, but overall, the Xeons in 2019 can still play games, and I'm pretty impressed with the performance so far. 
We also really like this case. This is the Aerocool Bolt G, which is basically like a rebrand of the Cylon, but they kind of did the front RGB a little bit different and it definitely looks cooler. There's also another case that they have that also has the RGB in like a different spot and we'll have probably have a video of that soon as well. But big thanks to Aerocool for sending over this really nice case. They tend to make a lot of really nice looking budget cases. This coming in around $40 with a temper glass side panel and Can't a really cool front. It's a really awesome value and Aerocool has been awesome enough to support us here on the channel. So special thanks again to them for sending this case over. So as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.